Support for the Pocket Now podcast comes from Oregon State University. Earn your Oregon State MBA 100% online in a program that's designed to help you move up or make a career change. You can choose from specialized tracks in organizational leadership, business analytics, marketing, or supply chain and logistics management. Get where you're going faster with the Oregon State MBA. Learn more at mba.oregonstate.edu slash pocket now. Look at this thing. It's beautiful. Right? Whoa, 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 look, it's shining the light. I can shine right into the camera. I hope no one gets blinded by that. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, But yes, we are talking about the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Mm -hmm. Plus in particular today in this Aura Glow color. Uh, So because this is a very colorful phone, I have Mm -hmm. one of the most colorful people that I know. Uh, a little yes. biased, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my girlfriend, Isa Rodriguez, uh, who does her own stuff over at Isa Does Tech. So you can look for that over on YouTube. But one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure we had her on, not only because she's actually here um, in L.A., where I'm mm-hmm. from, uh, is because you make such a big deal about, and a very valid big deal, about mm-hmm. colors when it comes to smartphones. And I think yeah. for the first time in a long time, maybe the most... This is probably the most obvious time that Samsung has ever put color as the forefront. I mean, just look at this thing. Like, I keep going like this. I'm going to go like this the whole show. But funny thing is, popular opinion, this isn't actually my favorite um, color. Mm -hmm. Color. Do you you say colorway? Color choice? Colorway, yeah. Colorway, yeah. yeah. This, This as pretty as... So it's pretty. It's just that when people describe it as a rainbow, I'm like, it's not really a rainbow. It's more like it's what you, it's what an oil slick looks like. Yes, when well. <laughs> and uh, it reminds me more of a mirror when you see it in real life. It reminds me more of a mirror mm-hmm. than an actual a rainbow. Prism, or is that too fancy of a word? I mean, sure, but I don't know. It just <laughs> reminds me more of a mirror. Yeah, because utility wise, is that a word? No. Yeah, well, yeah. Utility wise, yeah. that would be the purpose it would serve me. Yeah. Well, one thing that we do as tech YouTubers and tech correspondents and whatnot is we get to share the actual events that Mm -hmm. we go to. And obviously, the launch of this phone was a little over a week ago in New York City, in Brooklyn. So Unpacked was a little bit ago. Uh, The phone literally came in like a day or two ago. Yesterday, Um, I think. Something like that. I don't know when this episode's coming out. Oh. But the phone came in. So uh, obviously we're going to be doing our full reviews on it. She's going to be doing content on it as well. But I kind of wanted to also bring you on because it's, it was a way for us to sort of celebrate but also recount the fact that mm-hmm. it was your first ever unpacked. Yes, it was. Um, so funny thing, it felt weird being there because I've always written about these events. I've always done content on them. But... I've never actually been to an Unpacked in the U.S. I've been to one in uh, Barcelona. S9? S9, I think. I'm not sure. Oh. Like a year ago. I was thinking about this earlier. I thought that you have been to one before. I'd been to one in Barcelona, Mm. but not a Note Unpacked. Yeah. So that was pretty interesting. Um. It was also the first time that I was creating content for my own channel. So it wasn't like... When you have your own thing, it's very relaxed but overwhelming at the same time. Mm -hmm. On one one hand, you're like, okay, I'm the boss. So I get to say what I want to do. On the other, I'm like, holy shit. (laughs) I get to decide what I want. Yeah. What am I Oops. gonna do? Sorry. So yeah, it, it was pretty fun. Not just because it was an unpacked, not just because it was an unpacked where they actually presented colored phones, pink phones for the matter. Mm-hmm. It was also my very first unpacked that I came as me, and it was like super exciting. Also, your first time in New York, right? Yes. New York is such a common destination for all of us. Uh-huh. I'm sure all of you viewers know that we go to we go to New York a lot for a yeah. lot of different things. So that was her first time in New York. Yeah. Tried my best to bring her to a bunch of places in New York mm-hmm. after Unpacked was finished. But, you know, time time can only give you so much. I was much. lazy to walk around. <laughs> There's a lot of walking in, in I there. freaked out when I saw the Empire State. For some reason, that's the one thing that I've always, like, um, identified with New York. 
it was a really good time and obviously the phone was released to a lot of fanfare but there was also there were a lot of opinions about the Mm -hmm. phone itself which we can get into right now so i guess i could start off this podcast just by asking you what are your main thoughts about the note 10 and the note 10 plus i know you're disappointed Mm -hmm. we didn't get the actual note 10 the smaller one um because that's the one that comes in that red that red and also that translucent pink color Yes, so I think, I know that a lot of people aren't very happy with this phone, right? Like, we've heard a lot of concerns. I'm not going to say complaints because, like, the actual phones haven't shipped out. So, like, concerns about, like, what they were getting for the price. Um, I, I hear a lot of people saying that the S... So, someone actually said that the S Pen... No, wait, the, the Note 10, sorry, bear with me, I am like not in my best um, state of mind right now, but someone actually said that the Note 10 was the same phone as the S10 without the S Pen. Well, with, oh, an with S the pen. S Pen. And yeah. I'm just like, accurate, what is <laughs> Accurate, okay. But for me, that added feature of the S Pen is actually something that I'm excited about. I'm not sure if that's a popular opinion. Well, it depends. Like, we've asked the audience uh-huh. a lot in the past, like, do you actually use the S Pen on Note devices? And not everyone has really a straight answer because they everyone agrees that the S Pen is very useful. Uh-huh. You're, you're going to dive into the S Pen from a, a more lifestyle yes. standpoint. And obviously, certain features like the fact that you can use it as a camera shutter button, uh-huh. like, that's a big thing, too. But... Ultimately, when someone looks at the S Pen and they think productivity or they think about writing notes or they think, you know, there are virtual keyboards, why don't mm-hmm. we just use that? You know, everyone kind of, they don't want to outright say that the S Pen is useless, mm-hmm. you know, um, not in a general sense. Maybe it's useless to the individual user, mm-hmm. like David Amell said last week, like it's kind of pointless for him. But at the same time, they can't deny that the S Pen is still a tool that is worthy yeah. of existing. I think it's one of those things where like, it's there and it's just there until you figure out your personal workflow and your personal like use for it um in my case productivity wise i don't think the s pen was ever something that i'd use have you ever every everyday thing but okay but the s uh the note 9 when that came out had the shutter I had the first remote shutter capability. And, you know, a lot of people would argue that there are Bluetooth sh- remote shutters that you could just buy. And I had those devices. Mm-hmm. But that extra step of pairing that remote every time always got me and I never used it. The fact that the S Pen gave me that functionality and, like, very seamlessly, like, that was a big thing for me. And I remember it. I was on the Note nine last year around the same time last year when we went to mexico for vacation yeah and i legitly took so many instagram photos by myself with just the phone and the remote shutter so for me at least it wasn't the productivity side of the phone that attracted me to the s pen it was basically the remote shutter yeah which um, i'm kind of demonstrating a little bit right now and and so now the added features on this phone that's enough for me to actually want this thing like it's not even so the phone itself i feel like it had it has like okay specs or whatever Mm -hmm. but the fact that this s pen is a remote shutter and can can control the camera Mm -hmm. for me that's enough for me to want it and as I, i told you like for a lot of users like me who aren't the most techie the selling point, like you actually know you want a device when you've thought of how you'd use it in your daily life, right? Oh, yeah. Like the same way you know you want a dress because you've already imagined yourself wearing it. <laughs> well, that's basically it for me with this phone. Yeah. I, the moment they announced that it could do these things with the S Pen, I figured, well, oh my gosh. I, I had a number of instances where I felt like I, it would be so useful to me. There you go. I just wanted to make sure that I am recording a little bit so that we can show it on, on oh. screen, the different features that we have. So if I'm just using the pen and mm-hmm. I do like a right or left motion or I go up to change the actual modes, mm-hmm. 
there you go. So I'm on the rear camera. If I swipe up uh, while pressing the button, mm -hmm. that allows the change of the mode, which camera I'm using. Then left and right changes what types of video and photo I want to capture. Live focus video is pretty good. But yeah, I mean, this this is fun. It is ultimately a fun thing to mm -hmm. do, uh, but it might not be useful to everybody. And that's yet another yeah. thing about the S Pen that I feel like a lot of people contend with. Because mm -hmm. that's what they contended with when it came to like screen off memo and yeah. type and writing notes, not writing, uh, not, not typing, writing yeah. notes and actually like doing screenshots and like writing all over it even something like ar doodle that yeah. not everyone will really use but i think you are the use case scenario yes. where instead of the productivity features yes. of this s pen you might actually use it for the creative outlet yes definitely um and not just not just the uh what do you call this not just for remote selfies or remote photos but imagine the ar doodle and the live focus features for Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. See, this is a filter I'd use. Yeah, so we're looking at the uh, the, the VHS like glitch filter. Uh -huh. Everyone uh, use, seems to love this. Everyone's posting about this. Well, it's cool. It's stylistic, and the the actual um, the actual portrait mode that actually cuts like the subject out it does a pretty good job like mm -hmm. it everything is blurry and then once your face is in view like the facial recognition seems to work really well yeah so yeah there's a lot of fun to be had and that's all due to the s pen but as far as the rest of the phone is concerned like did you have any reactions to some of what people are saying online about you know there's certain features about this phone that are not there anymore like that headphone check to be perfectly honest i have lukewarm feelings about the headphone jack being there or being not there mm -hmm. i get more annoyed over the notch because it's something that i physically have to see every day mm -hmm. as opposed to the headphone jack because i mean wired not wired the only ever time that i feel like i need to have wired earphones would be when i'm editing mm -hmm. on a laptop yeah which is not on a phone so i'm not really bothered by it um I don't think it's a big deal, to be honest. And Well, you use wired headphones from time to time, don't you? I used to only exclusively wear wired earphones. Yeah. But wired earphones, non-wired earphones, if you're getting one, if you're getting the other, like it's, it's just a choice. You deal with it once and then you're done. Mm -hmm. Like if your phone doesn't have a, 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 an audio port, then you get yourself Bluetooth earphones and then your problem is solved. Yeah. Like so why done. why would you why do you think then that a lot of people are still upset about the headphone jack if in your eyes you could just solve the problem <laughs> uh, by by simply getting a pair of let's say Galaxy Buds or I any mean, of the many truly wireless earbuds that I'm addicted to? I mean the same way I guess I'm annoyed at the notch even when I can turn it off on most phones. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be there or they wanted it to be there and it isn't. Yeah. Uh, we also made the point that people um, depended on Samsung to be to have the last flagships. Because I so basically we had this conversation and I I said you know it's a little unfair for people to hate on Samsung for taking out the headphone jack when when in reality they should if they actually like the headphone jack they should be getting praises for letting it stick. That stick long, around that's what samsung right? was getting yeah yeah and but then you were saying yeah but the point is like if you've depended on a brand to have this for you and other people have taken it away like you sort of feel hurt that they actually take it out yeah right? i guess it, yeah familiarity mm -hmm. so if you are used to samsung actually providing certain features mm -hmm. and it goes away I, I can see where that yeah. becomes a problem uh you mentioned the notch mm -hmm. you really don't like the so my ranking is basically i hate the big notch right mm -hmm. that is the worst and then the teardrop notch is second like it's sort of okay like at well least this is a this is almost like a teardrop except it's, exactly but it's just I, a hole so like i don't like it but now i'm thankful that it's just not the notch mm. so i don't know this is some i may have been brainwashed by the fact <laughs> that like I'm seeing so many notches, but at first I hated every single thing that was an obstruction on the screen. And this is honestly why I love pop-up cameras so much. Not, I mean, sure, they're fun, Memories. but mostly it's because having a pop-up camera means I have the whole screen. Yeah. 
and that honestly to me is a very enjoyable experience and that's also why i've been on like pop-up cameras pop-up phones pop-up camera phones phone. yeah pop-up Cameras camera phones, phones yeah, yeah a lot so. yeah definitely all right well we're gonna talk a little bit more about the note 10 the note 10 plus but i also mm-hmm. have a question that's a little bit more existential uh the, which is one of the reasons a little well in terms of tech you okay. know just just from a more uh general standpoint which is the reason why i have you so on but we're gonna go into a quick break the following message and support for the pocket now podcast comes from nitsa the national highway traffic safety administration All right, everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. You could get in a crash. People could get hurt or killed. But here are some surprising statistics. Almost 29 people in the United States die every day in alcohol-impaired vehicle crashes. That's one person every 50 minutes. Even though drunk driving fatalities have fallen by a third in the last three decades, drunk driving crashes still claim more than 10,000 lives each year. Drunk driving can have a big impact on your wallet, too. You could get arrested and incur huge legal expenses. Expenses. You could even lose your job. So, what can you do to prevent drunk driving? Plan a safe ride home before you start drinking. Designate a sober driver or honestly call a taxi, an Uber, a Lyft, any one of those things so that you're not behind the wheel. And if you know someone who has been drinking, take their keys and arrange for them to get a sober ride home. We all know the consequences of driving drunk. So, one thing's for sure. You're wrong if you think it's no big deal. Drive sober or get pulled over. All right, we're back in it. Um, you know, so we are talking about the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, but I want to make sure that we get through a couple of recurring segments. I do have comments from last week's episode or the last episode of the podcast, I should say, uh, right here. And we're going to go through some of the top comments right now. Uh, but first, before we do that, you, you alluded to it right before we got to the break. Mm-hmm. Isa, Isa does tech. Isa Rodriguez, what'd you say, Isa? Isa? What? <laughs> Well, you're branding, you know, I'm just saying. Uh-huh. Like, um, So it's not like I'm sitting here going super SAF, you know, like SAF <laughs> or something like that, you know. Uh, Isa, what is in your pocket now? Well, I have the Oppo Reno 10 times Zoom still. Um, you were there with us on that Japan yes, trip. Yes, yeah. we, we were. On, it was funny because before that Japan trip, I was still at my previous company. I was using this same phone. And yeah. then I had to give it back because I, I, I left. And then I got this, and I was happy because I actually like this phone. Um, I really like the screen on this thing. Mm. I really like that unobstructed view. My only qualm with this phone is that it is a little too big and too heavy for my hands. Okay. But I deal with it anyway. I also have... Um, you were talking about pop-up cameras, too. Yeah. I also have the Honor 20 Lite, which is... I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Another colorful phone. Yeah, but also I pink love background, this. all that stuff. We, had, you know, trying to be very good to our guests. Here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this is the baby version of the Honor Twenty and the Honor Twenty Pro. Mm-hmm. This is their, if I'm not mistaken, entry level. Yeah, that's or a good mid-range way to put it. version, entry level to mid-range version. Um, it doesn't have the best specs, but I love how it feels because it's light. And it's like more Isa hand friendly. It's tinier. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I've gotten compliments on this phone everywhere I've gone to. Like it's it's a very pretty phone. So. Another well, she gets compliments on the phone, but also the fact that it matches her Everything. in a lot of ways. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's the thing. That's the kind of stuff that you can find over at Isa Does Tech. Uh, lifestyle content, but yes. also it's all about, you know, sort of championing this mm-hmm. whole idea that phones should be as fashionable as they are useful. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that we're going to get into in a little bit. Just a quick teaser. But um, in my case, obviously, I'm using the Galaxy S, uh, Galaxy Note 10 Plus. It does get confusing mm-hmm. trying to say all that. The Galaxy Note 10 Plus, so the review will be coming out hopefully not too, not too, not too long from now. Um, uh, fairly soon and speaking of the note 10 plus we did talk about it last week i was on the cast with david ml um and he was remoting in and we had just gotten to uh we had just gone to unpacked shortly yes. before that so we were all there together so david gave his thoughts on the uh the note 10 plus as well so make sure you watch that episode in any case we do have a lot of comments on mm-hmm. this uh episode so one of the first ones i'll talk about has to do with the s pen uh and uses for it that we may not realize uh-huh. Mike E, I'm a general contractor, operator, slash owner. 
Uh, I used my S Pen every single day with my Note 9. As far as the size goes, Samsung did not build the Note series for one-handed use. I don't know yeah. how many times I have to say this. The Note series is meant to be a two-handed phone anyway. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I mean, it's a big phone, right? Mm-hmm. But that's the reason why the original Note 10, or the original, mm-hmm. the smaller Note 10... Appeals to me. It makes so much sense, right? Yeah. Like, they even said on stage, and even though you can make all these arguments about the different features that are missing or anything like that, the point of the matter is... As long as you look past those uh, transgressions, uh, the Note 10, not Note 10 Plus, the Note 10 is for people who wanted an S Pen experience, mm-hmm. but still wanted a phone that they didn't have to do hand gymnastics for all yes, over. Yes. So people who want big screens, you're not invalidated whatsoever. Yeah. It's just that people who don't want their screen yeah. to be like that, like, oh, I'm gripping the yes. phone. It's They wanted something a little more accessible. And I think that's something that should be celebrated. Uh-huh. Yes, and despite all um, the concerns that there have been with the note, with the new notes, Mm -hmm. I have to admit that this is the first note phone that I actually want. Mm. The Note 10, at least, I I want the Note 10 more than I want the Note 10 Plus, and it's the first note phone that I want because historically I've felt like the note phones are too big for me. I've always liked the S phone's form factor better Mm -hmm. in fact when the s10 came out i wasn't the biggest fan because it looked way too much like the note phones and i felt like it would be too big for me although you know i did change my mind eventually i mean i didn't change my mind about the size i changed my mind when i used it because the cameras were actually s10 plus yeah the s10 plus yeah i used you still weren't able to get your hands on the s10e huh no i feel like you would have yeah i feel like you would have adored that phone yes um, all right, so more S Pen talks. Uh, Wall does. Oh, it does. <laughs> Wall does. S Pen is useful too. Edit videos, which is another thing. Um, yeah. There is a full editing suite on the Note 10 Plus. And I'm actually going to be doing a video over on my channel. Um, I'm sure Jaime will end up doing something similar to this. Can you go from 0 to 100 um, planning, filming, editing, publishing using just this? I want to see that. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm going to f- try to film an entire vlog using just this phone and only its capabilities, including all of the editing. Um, so yeah. what were the other ones? Edit videos, Photoshop things precisely. Mm-hmm. There is Photoshop on yeah. Android. Uh, draw precisely. Yes, artists definitely have a lot and, to... And um, who was this? Uh, our friend Ben was saying he edits articles. Oh, so okay. So the stuff that... He red pens them, really. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it's true. Like, that's how you originally edit Mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, You can also use the S Pen to make precise cuts for screens and montages. Mm -hmm. Um, AR things like 3D scanning and to control your phone remotely, obviously, the camera stuff. Uh, There are also other features, but, like, mainly the camera is what Samsung was able to put Mm -hmm. into the Note 10 Plus, at least for now. But the S Pen, the SDK for the uh, the S Pen is open to all apl- uh, to all applications. So as long as they develop for the S Pen, mm-hmm. you can probably get more features out of it. Um, sign documents, yeah, that's true. Uh, screen off memo and to make docs. I mean, there are a lot of pro features. Yeah, I think we tend to agree. Uh, let's see here. Oh, as far as the design is concerned, Paul Emisi. It's quite uncanny that David M. L. was responding and saying every single thing I have in my head, especially the boxiness of the Note mm-hmm. and the affordability of the smaller one. Mm-hmm. David made the point that this phone's a little too boxy. It makes it a bit more unwieldy. And yeah. earlier I had you hold this and the S10 Plus. Yeah. Like, how did you feel about that comparison? Because the S10 Plus is a little more rounded around the edges. I might be a little um, biased because I still feel like the S10 Plus feels most like the note i get what you're saying it's not too sharp Mm -hmm. but it's also i keep on coming back to the s phones that i like which was the s8 and the s9 which were rounder and like sort of thinner Mm. so i'm like sure it's rounder but it's also like the s10 does seem like it's similar to the note yeah yeah um (laughs) <laughs> PJ says, when it comes to the note, I'm close-minded. No confusion, no doubt. I'm getting it. <laughs> Pre-ordered, I'll be turning heads mm-hmm. on August 23rd. I'll be doodling everyone in the office. <laughs> I don't know if I... Okay, I'm not a good artist. So I don't know if I would ever honestly use AR Doodle. I honestly oh don't know. Oh my gosh, that is one... I am excited. Okay, this is... It's funny that everyone's freaking out over this. Remember that time... Was it last year when you were in Hong Kong? Mm. When was that? What do you mean with the Meitu phone? 
Yes. Yeah. When was that? That was a while ago. That was Hong that Kong. That was a year? Probably. A year ago? <laughs> Who knows? Remember? We've been together so long, guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it feels like it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> anyway, but, um, so when we were in Hong Kong last, we did play around with that May 2. Yes, but I, all, I was also playing around with a Google app. Oh, I don't remember. That allowed me to do AR doodles. Remember, I tweeted oh, yeah, this that's video, right. and like I was drawing stars and hearts and around you. And you made a video of me. That was me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. It's basically the same thing with the S Pen, except this is built in. Yeah. So, I mean, people are saying no one's ever going to use it. I've actually used it before they made it, and I've wanted it. Yeah, so I mean, I am super excited. It's over for it. fun, and that's why I, I, I kind of take exception to just how hard Samsung pushes the term productivity with this phone. Mm. They should say, okay, creative. They've started using that term more. Yeah. I agree with that. But fun, you know, why don't you just? It's fun, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm actually really excited to do gaming content with this phone because there's a screen recorder that also allows you to take video of yourself. Mm -hmm. You could literally do game streaming with this, in, in, in a sense. And yeah, I'm really excited about that one last comment before i get into the final question for mm -hmm. you um all right lars right jepson hold on okay here we go a thing i haven't seen oops i'm terrible with the there you go a thing i haven't seen much pointed out is that the s pen is marvelous for people with arthritis in the hands mm -hmm. millions and millions of people suffer from thumb arthritis for example um, and as I took out the S Pen, it gave me a prompt. So I'm trying to get out of it. There you go. Um, millions and millions of people suffer from thumb arthritis, for example, mm -hmm. making it very painful to use your thumbs on the phones, and the S Pen makes it painless. And then uh, a, a reply to that comment, so, so true. My thumbs have been cramping up more than usual, and the S Pen has been great as an alternative mm -hmm. input method for my note. That's actually, I never yeah. thought about that. I love it when people in the comments actually open up your mind a little bit. Mm -hmm. So thank you all of you for commenting on that last episode. Make sure you get into the comment sections down below to tell us. Now, this is going to be the question that I'm posing to all of you and the question I want to end this podcast with with you, mm -hmm. since it's one of your wheelhouses with your content. Why does the color of a phone actually matter so much? Not just to you, but just in general. Like Samsung definitely put all of their... They put a lot of resources behind making this particular color. We've always seen mm -hmm. like Huawei phones and Honor phones having great colors like that one. Oppo did the same. Like it's yeah. become a trend. And now we're, I don't know if we've reached peak coloration with this like craziness right here, but it's, I think it's a pertinent question. One of the reasons why mm -hmm. I wanted to have you on this week. Why does color matter so much? I think, again, one, it's because we've gotten to the point where phones, these gadgets have exceeded not just their utilitarian value but they've mm. also become well part of your personality it's become an accessory this is the same reason why so many people i guess are mad at let's say for example samsung for losing the headphone jack because they've identified um their personalities with a certain brand and they feel like when that brand does something different that changes and it shifts mm. but in the same way that um color allows you to own something yeah. you know it it gives you that added level of personalization that's one number two if you buy pretty things just because they're pretty what more is a value of something that's pretty and gives you that utility sure right like I buy like pretty rings or nail polish and like what is the value of nail polish aside from being pretty mm -hmm. right this is something that's useful and pretty why not yeah and on my third point and I, I I will have a video about this that talks about this more color is not just something that's pretty it actually evokes certain emotions in people mm -hmm. you know so if you think about it, if a color makes you feel happy, if a color makes you feel calm, if you, a color makes you feel excited or dazzled, why not? Okay. Right? Yeah. And I think some people forget that if that's all the reason why someone needs something, then that's mm -hmm. all the reason that yeah. is required. So, yeah, I mean, I feel, yeah, you're right. And for the, some people, it's like they want a screen that is buttery smooth for some people they want a phone that games some people just want pretty things yeah and if it's a it's a great brand it's a great phone that adds that option to get a pretty color that's all better so let me go ahead and evoke i'm sure a lot of people out there are like 
asking this question in their heads or you're mm -hmm. saying it to your computer screen right now or your phone. So how do you justify, we've mm -hmm. already kind of answered this question, but how do you feel then, not justify, how do you feel about the fact that the color you want, that pink Note 10, mm -hmm. and in my case, the red Note 10, not just for the size, but also yeah. that red color is really nice, uh -huh. is missing features. It's got the 1080p screen, mm -hmm. no micro SD card slot, um, obviously no headphone jack, but yeah. that's for both. And there's no vapor cooling for the processor, so mm -hmm. gaming might take a small hit. Like, there are literally features that Samsung was like, you know what, the smaller phone, mm -hmm. not going to get it. So in an ideal world, I get all the colors on the, and all Even the on features, this one. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the ideal world. That's the Pixel still... philosophy. Because the Pixel does that. Yeah, but the Pixel gives you a phone and names it not pink, and it's pink but not really. So I don't like that. <laughs> well, like, I, I, you know, get, I, you know my point though. Yeah, that but, both but, phones, yeah. no matter what size you get, have all the features aside yeah. from size and the size of the battery. But that's a yeah. physics thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, I like my Pixel too. Um, yeah. But in an ideal world, you'd have that. I still don't know why this is not happening. I don't like it. But another point to be made is that these smaller S tens, the S tens, actual S tens. Yeah. I feel like they no tens. Oh, oh my gosh! Sorry. It's really no, hard, it's, guys. I've been Bear confused. I've been <laughs> yeah. confused. And there's there's the X phones and then mm -hmm. the X. So yeah. Um. So the no tens of the world. I feel like it's great that these are coming out because the features that you just enumerated, that you said you found lacking, these are things I've I've never really given that much importance on. Like I feel like there is a target audience whose priorities are not that like girl my girlfriends friends of mine aren't gonna care about a micro sd card slot mm. or they're not gonna care about the screen resolution because i would notice a pink phone but i i i never got like oh my gosh resolution on this 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 phone is like just not, you know mm -hmm. so my point is that it seems like with the Note 10s, Samsung is targeting not just the power users, but someone who'd like to, again, you mentioned, take part of this Samsung Note experience, but don't really need all that jazz. Yeah. You know? Once upon a time, the Note was leather. <laughs> it was literally made to look like a productivity device. It it sat the Note 4, which mm -hmm. is a beloved Note. I know everybody loves the Note 4. I do too. The Note 4 with its metal chassis, its metal frame, and its leather backing mm -hmm. sat right next to phones like the BlackBerry yeah. of the Blackberries of the world, made for productivity users, mm -hmm. business users, and now we're in a world where all of that's blending together. Yes. Um, yes. So Definitely. yeah, I, I think um, I think that that's sort of where Samsung is at this yes. point, and that's why the colors are a thing. And I I just want to add, I am so thankful that phone manufacturers are finally noticing the hole in in smartphone marketing because for the longest time it was all like it can do this, let's climb the ladder of specs and just give like give it all, it's all or nothing or whatever. But now they're noticing this whole new breed of lifestyle users mm -hmm. who care about color, who care about cameras a lot, who care about yeah, I don't cre know, creativity and phones fitting their hands. Expression. Yeah, yeah. You know? I yeah, that's one that's basically one reason why I like the the smaller note. Mhm. Mm fits my hand better oh yeah yeah and, you know, that's why i want it too yeah. like you know I, I don't mind this the s10 plus has been more than enough for me so the mm -hmm. Note 10 plus is not that much bigger again like david said it's a little bit boxier but if, uh, if you drop it on your face it's probably gonna hurt more i almost did uh so i think that uh that should pretty much do it for the Note 10 plus discussion um and also why colors matter especially in the case of this phone which mm -hmm. Tries to have it's every a lot single of color. color. But look at there's so many fingerprints on it already. It's crazy. Like, mm. yeah, hopefully we'll be able to uh, take a look you at see least. see that Mr. Mobile tweet about how he just like had the, the phone for an hour. An hour, yeah. And it looked like. Ugh. Yeah, that's the reason why I actually reached out and I asked if we could get the accessories for mm -hmm. the Note 10 Plus. So hopefully we'll be able to look at even more ways of expressing yourself using a phone like this. Uh, in any case, that that is this discussion on the Note 10 Plus. Obviously, you'll see a lot of content on this phone coming out. Uh, you can see content here on Pocket Now, over on my channel, youtube.com slash Joshua Vergara, and also over at youtube.com slash Issa Does 
tech. Those links are in the description down below. You probably saw a card or two appear earlier as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Issa, go ahead and tell everybody where to find, uh, where they can find you. And yes, I am on at Issa said on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube.com slash slash Issa does tech. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, follow Pika now all over the place on Instagram, Twitter, and also don't forget to subscribe to the Pika now channel and follow the podcast using whatever podcasting application you might use to listen to the show. Thank you so much for listening and uh, get into the show notes and into the description down below uh, in order to see more information about where to find all of us and to where to find the where to find the podcast. And then of course get into the comment sections below to join the discussion about why colors matter, not just to you, mm -hmm. but why colors matter in general to these smartphones. Also which one of the Note 10s would you want to have? Also, don't forget to get into the comment sections down below to join the discussion about why colors matter. Not just to you, you can tell us mm -hmm. why colors matter to you and why you would pick a certain color of a phone, but also maybe why colors are becoming more and more important to companies these days. Samsung's mm -hmm. just the latest example of them. Uh, and on top of that bonus question, which of the Note 10s would you choose, even if it's color or not, uh, if it's not inspired by color or not, uh, which Note 10 would you want? Uh, but from there, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching or listening, and we will see you in the next episode.